Good morning and welcome to Gardening on the West Fork. This morning I will be working inside the house in the basement because I'm sowing some snapdragon seeds getting ready for a cut garden this year and what I'm going to show you are the basics and they're very easy to do in your home. I have my trays. I also have a three-tiered uh, garden stand with my heating pads and my lights set up right over there in the corner that these little guys will get tucked into. But for right now, let's just talk about the basics, which is your seed starting trays. This is a 72 count, picked up local store. It has 72 cells, which will be um, filled up with moist potting soil. The tray, it comes with this tray, which is a non-hold tray, which is wonderful because we'll have to water these things as time goes by and I don't want them dripping on everything. And then it comes with the dome, which is necessary to hold moisture in once you have them in your little area on a heating pad. It holds some moisture and helps it to germinate. So let's get started. Move this out of the way. What I have, I have a towel under here so I don't get too much messed up and I also have to draw a cloth on the floor because it's, it's pre-moistened soil, which I've already done. I've taken my seed starting potting mix and that's very, very important. You want seed starting mix, not actual potting soil. You want what's gonna be good to get these guys started in the best place. And I'm gonna be planting my snapdragons, which are tiny little seeds and I'll show those once I get the soil into the pot. You always want to mark your seeds starting because you may not remember depending on how many you're planting. Um, so I wrote Snapdragon mixed colors. That's, that's what I have. It's a mixed colored group and they're the tall ones which is going to be great for cutting and putting them in a pot around your house or giving them away. I'm going to date it today because it on the packet it says you want to plant them eight to ten weeks before the last frost and from what I could see from what I googled it looked like May 15th could be their last frost so surely they'll be ready by then and if not I can you I'll have to harden them off a little bit but I think they'll be fine in these little packets if they get too spindly we'll just have to pot them out so let's put this date down which is March the 5th great and now let's get the potting soil which is already like I said I've already moistened that and You don't want to pack them in, you want them to stay nice and loose. Just like that. Here in a second, I'll tap it on the tack it. good news is if all these do germinate and I don't have room everyone who's a local that's watching these videos you can just message me on my Facebook page and I will share these beautiful lovely plants because I'll be planting some cosmos this year marigolds sunflowers and uh, you know I'm a small garden person so not a lot of space all right one last tap just like that. And the snapdragons, they are tiny, 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 tiny seeds. And probably many of you have planted them, but I never have. I've already bought annuals, but let me show you how tiny. You can see barely a dust. So I'm gonna put two of those in each cell. Just them. I'm just going to put them on top of the soil since they're so loose because I'm going to be putting vermiculite over top of them and then giving them a spritz of water. They don't like to be buried too deep um, at all. You know, your seeds, you want to bury them twice the size of their size. 
and these don't have any size to them at all. So I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I will finish those off, but to keep the video a little shorter, I'm going to I'll finish those um, once we're done. So I'm going to sprinkle some light weight vermiculite all over the first two rows. What's nice about using the vermiculite, when the plants start to come through, they won't have to shove through the soil and they'll be able to show up. You'll be able to see their nice little green heads showing up immediately and be able to stay on track for that. And then what I'm gonna do with the rest of the tray too is just like this, but I'm going to just give a little spritz on top of that to hold things in place. I'm gonna put the lid on just like this. How exciting. Just like this. And I'll show you where I'm going to bed them down. And what I'm going to do is I will check on these uh, about every three, two or three days, maybe three or four while they're in my basement. I'll probably check on them all the time. But what you can see is I have heating pads on my shelves grow lights and I have this nice little plastic cover it came with it. Picked it up you know, Amazon for very little. So that's what we're going to do. We'll keep the lid on it. Let's get that on there straight. Just like that. I will flip this down to give it a little more heat. It's nice and warm here right under the heating vent. So you want things to be between you know 65, 70 if you can. If not you can have a little space heater. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Um, so, you know, how exciting. I'll be able to have all these four done with the rest of my trays of plants. And you'll get to see those too. But for now, those are the nestled little snapdragons, the tall ones. And thanks again. This is a great day. It's 20 some degrees outside right now. So we're not out in the garden. It's beautiful and sunny. I will take a walk, but thanks for watching Gardening on the West Fork with Teresa. And leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell button so you know when I do another. And uh, I'd love to hear questions, answers, uh, help me out here, you know, for growing these. But again, thanks for watching and have a great day.